Okay, so let's take a look at how to do a few of the questions here. This is a question set um, from one to five um, on where we have to find angles and reasons of what those angle measures are um, given the property of a triangle. So let's uh, take a start by taking a look at question number one. So with question number one, we have a pair of triangles that are kind of stuck together and we're looking to find the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two. Okay, as marked in the diagram. So the first thing we should notice here is that we have a set of isosceles triangles. Um, and we know that because the, uh, there's a little hash mark here on each of the sides. So that the single hash mark means that those two sides are equivalent. And then also the two hash marks on each of those two sides means that the, those two, the lengths of those two sides are equivalent. So why is that important? Well, in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are equal to each other. So what that means is that if we were looking at this first triangle here where the 70 degrees is marked, that means this angle right here is also 70 degrees because it is a base angle to an isosceles triangle. So if we know that this one is 70, what can that help us uh, figure out about the measure of angle one. Well, what we do notice here is that a straight line, angles on a straight line, um, sum to 180 degrees. So we could say that angle one is equal to 180 degrees minus 70, which is equal to 110. So 110 degrees would be the measure of angle one. And the reason, reasoning behind that is we can say um, angles on a line um, equal 180. Um, another reason, another way to express that is to say that these are called supplementary angles, where supplementary means um, there's two angles there that add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so any one of those reasons would be acceptable for explaining why angle one would be 110. So we can mark that in there, 110. Okay, now the next thing is, is I'll just erase uh, the other parts of that there, is what would be the measure of angle two? Well, we know we have another isosceles triangle here. So angle two, which is indicated by that little mark there, is equivalent to the same base angle on the other side because it's the base of an isosceles triangle. So what would be the measure of angle two? Well, angle two could simply be um, we know a triangle has 180 degrees. If we subtract the, the central angle there, the 110 degrees, and then split it into two, that should give us the value of the base angles. So 180 minus 110 is 70, divided by two is 35 degrees. So 35 degrees would be the, the answer for angle two. And then what you could say for the reasoning behind that is you could just say um, sum of angles um, in triangle okay, equals um, 180 degrees. Okay, that would be, that would be an appropriate reasoning um, to say of how you deduce uh, 35 degrees for angle two there. Okay, so those are kind of the steps that you wanna think about as you go through these questions. Um, let's look at question number two here because it's just slightly, a little bit different and then um, that'll, that should be, give you enough information to carry on um, with the other problems. So the first thing we look at here is that we notice we have two lines that have arrows on them. So that is an indicator that those lines are known as parallel lines. Okay, and so we're probably going to be using properties of parallel lines in order to figure out what the angles are here. So the first thing I would take a look at here is you can imagine extending the parallel lines like this, okay? And then I'll just use another color here. Um, you have two lines here that actually cut across the parallel lines, okay? So this line right here that I'm gonna just kind of shade in here in green, okay, is a transversal to those two parallel lines, okay? so. If we remember what transversal lines mean, is it creates the, um, the configuration where we have alternate um, or corresponding angles. 
okay, alternate interior or corresponding angles, um, which we know are equal according to our, to our properties there. So we have one line that goes this way, and then we have another line that goes across like this here. So we have two lines that cut across the parallel lines. So we can use that property to try to figure out what the missing angles are. So let me just erase those, those ones here in green. Um, okay, and then we'll try to go back and work these out. So what this tells us is a couple of things here. So I have this angle here that I know is 60 degrees. This is a um, alternate interior angle um, to the, the uh, to this transversal that cuts across this parallel line. So that means its corresponding angle is right here, which is going to be 60 degrees. Now, we are asked to find angle four. So what do we know about angles on a straight line? Because we have a straight line here, and we know one part of the angle is 60. So angle four would have to be equal to, I'll just do it over here, angle four would have to be equal to 180 degrees minus 60. So that would give us 120. All right, so that's a quick way to figure out what that angle four would be because we're using alternate interior angles first to find one, one part that's missing and then subtracting from 180. So again, we could use the same rule here that just says here angles um, on a line okay, equal 180 degrees. All right, so that's one way to, uh, to look at what angle four would be. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> what else are we asked to look here for? Well, we need to find angle three. So angle three is right here. So I'm just going to mark it in as with a different set of hash marks. That's number three. And what could we do to figure out the measurement for angle three? Well, we know a couple of things. We know we, we actually have a triangle here, okay, three-sided shape. So angle three is the unknown. We know the other part of the triangle here is 60 because we've got that from the previous question. But we also know that this angle right here is 90 degrees, okay, because this is, again, <clears throat> the other side is measured with a little square. So we know that's 90, and angles on a straight line add up to 180. So therefore, that it, it would stand to reason that both of these are 90 degree angles. Okay, so to find angle three, we could just simply use our triangle property again. Okay, we know a triangle is 180 degrees. We'll subtract 60 from that and then 90 from that. So um, 60 and 90 is 150. Take a, uh, subtract that from 180. That's going to give us a measure of um, <clears throat> 30 degrees. Okay, so that's... That's one way that we could um, we could get that that measurement there. Um, I don't know if there's there another property that we could use here. Um, we don't. I don't. We sort of see there's uh, that would probably might be the easiest way to deduce that. So we our reasoning we could say there here is um, a triangle. A, the uh, sum of angles equals sum of angles equals 180 degrees. Sum of angles in a triangle okay, equals 180 degrees. That's probably one of the easiest ways we can take a look at it. Okay, and then angle two um, is kind of the same thing here. We know that um, angle two, well, I'm just gonna mark it with uh, three, three hashes there is part of a triangle where we know it is um, 180 degrees in a triangle. We know one part of that there is 25 degrees and we know the other part is 90. So 25 and 90 is 115. Let's make sure that's right here. So 90 plus 25. So 115, and then we subtract that from 180. Um, that is going to give us an angle of 65 degrees. So 65 degrees is the measure for angle two, and then we can also say it's the sum of angles in a triangle. 
okay, because we know that's 180 degrees, so that would give us a way to, to do that. And then the last one we have to do is find angle one. So angle one is right up here. Oops, sorry about that. Angle one is right up here. Okay, I'll just put in four ticks there. Now the only thing that we should know about angle one here is that it is formed by the transversal that cuts that parallel line. So that means this measure right here, I'll just, let me just make this a little bit thicker so it's easier to see here. This measure right here is going to be the same as this whole angle right here. Okay, because those are going to be alternate um, interior lines to that transversal. Okay, so if I, I'll just erase those here, and if we go back and, and look at it, we know then that angle one is going to have to be equal to the sum of, um, angle one is going to have to be equal to the sum of 25 degrees plus angle three. So we know three is 30 and three plus, um, 30 plus 25 is going to give us 55 degrees there. So this would be, uh, this would be equal to 55 degrees. And we could just say that these are, um, um, well, we could just say these are alternate interior angles because that's what they are, alternate, um, alternate interior angles, and, and also we can say um, sum of angles um, in triangle, because it's part of that triangle. Okay, so either of those would be a good reason to to deduce, to give, to understand why that you can have that as 55 degrees. So there's our missing um, compo uh, components for this diagram. 55, 